Hi, my name is Andrew, and today I'll be presenting our paper, Dynamic Pricing with Bayesian Updates from Online Reviews. This is joint work with Jose Correa and Mathieu Marie. So we imagine that a firm wishes to sell a product. This product um, has a quality. It's either good or bad. And we have a prior X on the product's quality. The user, upon purchasing the product, will leave a review either liking or disliking the product. And the probability of the user leaving a like or dislike is based on whether the product is good or bad. For example, if the product is good, then the user will leave a like with probability p and a dislike with probability 1 minus p. But if the product is bad, then the user will like the product with probability q, q being less than p, and disliking the product with probability 1 minus q. There is a price pi to purchase the product and a cost c to produce the product. The expected reward of a buyer thus is xp plus 1 minus x times q minus pi. As the firm wishes to calculate the expected revenue of the product, we also consider a discount factor delta. After a like or a dislike from a buyer, uh, both the buyers and the sellers can update the prior x in a Bayesian manner um, in the equations presented on this slide. We note an interesting property that the prior, after a sequence of likes and dislikes in reviews, is independent from the order and is given by the expression um, in this slide also. Thus, we have two questions we want to consider. What is the optimal pricing strategy to choose? And what is the expected revenue of a product? The first pricing strategy we can consider is the seller setting a fixed price. This price does not change. And so um, we note that after every product purchase and every like or dislike review, and after the buyers and the sellers both update the prior X, this product will only continue selling while the local reward for the buyer is positive. In an alternative uh, pricing approach, we can also set a dynamic price based on the prior X. Similarly as before, after every product review and purchase, we update the prior X. We prove that the optimal price to set pi is such that the local reward is uh, non-negative, is zero for the buyer. So then the buyer is uh, not discriminatory towards purchasing the product. The seller, um, interestingly though, may continue selling the product even when the cost to produce the product C is higher than the price pi. Uh, we prove that we continue selling um, up until a point x star where this prior x star is lower than when the x such that the local reward is zero. And when your prior x is within the range of x star and local reward being zero, here um, you sell at a loss but the intuition of why here the expected revenue is still positive is because the probability of the product being good and the desire to gain more information outweighs the loss in the short term. So with these two pricing methods, we also uh, present two approaches to computing the product um, expected revenue. The first of which is dynamic programming. We showed that the seller's revenue um, as a function of the prior in the dynamic pricing case is given by the expression on the slide. And if P and Q satisfy certain conditions, then the space of possible priors is discrete, such that we can then compute um, the expected revenue in an efficient manner. In the diagram on the right, we show an example where um, your P is 0 0.6, your Q is 0 0.4, your cost C is 0.5 and your delta is 0.9. And we show interestingly that your X star at around 
um, is much lower than when that the local reward is zero at when x equals 0 0.5. Um, we see that in the range between these two priors, your expected revenue is positive, even though um, selling a single product at that prior may have a negative revenue. In our second approach, we um, take a combinatorial approach. In order to compute the revenue of the seller, we need to consider um, the number of review sequences that lead to um, the product not being sold. Um, because when the product dips below, when the product prior dips below X star, this is when we no longer sell the product. Uh, in order to calculate the number of sequences, we, uh, we use Catalan's quadrilateral numbers, which is an extension of the well-known Catalan numbers. Um, through Catalan quadrilaterals, we can then give an expression to calculate the, um, the prior X star, where we know the expected revenue is zero. And from knowing the prior X star, we can then compute the expected revenue at any prior. Finally, in other results in the paper, we compare the optimal static and dynamic pricing strategies and compare um, the differences of the two strategies. We can also estimate the value or the probability of adopting the product in which we sell forever and the probability that we do not continue selling the product forever uh, using optional stopping theorem. More results are available in our paper and thank you very much for checking this out.